I am Erica Holsey and today we're going to be learning something together. Um, I am fairly new to the sublimation world and so I wanted to take this journey with you because I know there's a lot of people out there who are new just like myself. And so there's no better way to mess up but in front of the camera together so maybe you can see what I'm doing right and what I didn't do right so you cannot make the same mistake. Now the puzzle I purchased, I got it off of Amazon and I will put a link to it in the description. But I got a small puzzle because I wanted to try to try it out before I invested a whole lot of money in um, something new that I wanted to offer. So my puzzle is a five by five and a seven by eight. And I already put those dimensions in because I'm in Illustrator. But if you need to, you can always go here to edit your board and change the numbers right here, the width and the height. So that is something that you can do if you, if you don't know how to do that, you can go in and adjust what you need, okay? So we're gonna go and get the image that I wanna use. I'm gonna go to place, and then I'm gonna find my little adorable grandson, and I'm gonna just stretch him out to fit my puzzle. All right, and I'm just gonna pull him to the edge because I want it to go off the edge. I want it to print off the edge, so that's perfectly fine. I'm not gonna add his name or anything else to it. I just wanted to have the image just to practice on, so I'm doing that with you. I'm gonna go here to my print files, and I am using the Epson ET2720. And one of the things that I notice when I pull it up here in Illustrator is that it doesn't give me a whole lot of options to do, um, to pick different things. So we're learning this together. And as you can see, it's in the middle of my page. And I'm just gonna waste a sheet just so I can do this and get it right and I'll, I'll cut it down and make sure it's what I need and everything else. So we're gonna go ahead on and we're gonna hit print and then we're gonna go over to our heat press and get our settings taken care of. Okay, now we're over to my working station and one thing I wanted to mention to you that I did not mention a few minutes ago is that make sure you mirror your image and you want because you're going to lay it face down on your puzzle so you want to make sure that your image is mirrored for me it really doesn't matter however it's laid it's going to work the way i want it to but in the future you need to know that it needs to be mirrored so do not forget that Okay, so I need to cut this down. And as you can see, I have one of my puzzle pieces here and it's nice and shiny and it has like a little sparkle to it. I don't know if you can see that. And the package looks just like this. Like I said, I'm doing these for children's puzzles um, for my gift boxes. So I didn't really need anything really, really huge. And I didn't want to do them with a lot of pieces. So this is what it looks like. And it has, 40 it's a 48 it's 48 piece puzzle um each one of these are 48 pieces so i'm just gonna cut this on down and then we're gonna take it out of the package and like i said i could have probably did this a little better where it was a way neater and fit perfectly on here but for the sake of learning it doesn't matter but it will in the future, I'm, I'm positive it would. All right, and so now we're gonna finish this last little piece. All right, so we got him all cut out and now we're gonna place him on the puzzle. And he's gonna go face down on the puzzle. And he's a little bigger than the puzzle and that's totally fine. We're gonna do it face down on the puzzle. Now, one of the things I went back on the website because I've been watching other people's videos and one of the things they were saying was the temperature that they were using as far as the heat press was concerned. And I was gonna go with one of the, the temperatures that I seen on another video that a gentleman was doing on his puzzle. 
But when I went back to the website, it gave me the suggested temperature that they said I should use for this particular puzzle. So you might wanna check the site wherever you get it and see if they give a recommendation for the temperature that they want you to use. So now we're gonna switch over to the heat press and get it all settled up and get our, our, our puzzle into the printer and finally see our final project. Okay, Farmer, the, the suggested temperature for this particular puzzle is 365, so we're gonna change that to 365. I wanna make sure I don't go over. Uh-oh. 365 for 60 seconds. That seems like a very long time but I hope it'll go by quickly. Okay, so while that is heating up, we're gonna go ahead on and prepare our puzzle. I have um, a very worn butcher paper and I wanna lay that here. And because this puzzle is half, I'm gonna just put it one here and one here and then cover it up. So I won't, I won't end up needing two sheets of paper. So I wanna make sure that when the time comes and I'm ready, that I have my puzzle facing up and my image facing down. And I am using A sub paper, and then I'm just gonna close it up and then put my other sheet on top of it. So we are going to get started as soon as our numbers count up. Okay, now that our heat press is ready, I wanna take a quick second to ask you guys to hit that notification bell and that subscribe to my channel. And as I am learning new things about sublimation and trying new things, I wanna share that with you. So please uh, go ahead on and subscribe, hit that notification button, and let's learn together. So now we are at the temperature we need. We have our our puzzle all laid out we have it covered up we're gonna go in and we're gonna do this for the time we need it so let's press together all right checking my temperatures i want to make sure it's right what we need it all right we're going in all right now we're ready and this is a hot peel so we wanna make sure we take it and we get it off immediately. And oh, that looks beautiful. I am so happy with how that turned out. He looks so cute and it looks perfect. Again, hit that uh, subscription button and hit that notification button. And as I continue to learn things, I want you on this journey with me. This is fantastic. I am really excited on how his puzzle turned out. It is fantastic. So thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave it below. I will leave in the comment section the puzzle that I use, my temperatures that I use, as well as the paper that I use. Thank you for watching my video and we'll see you in the next one.